Well, hey everybody, it's your good buddy 650E Prayer, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're at Sills Motor Sales in snowy, cold, 18 degree Cleveland, Ohio, and we're going to give you another fantastic episode of the new bike build series. Today, Zach, the master mechanic, is going to explain to us why we use Bryn tuning to flash the ECU on our BMW motorcycles. And then he's going to walk us through the process of flashing the ECU onto our 2021 S1000RR. This is all leading up to us offering that amazing motorcycle to one of you fantastic people viewing the video. Information on how you might win our 2021 black S1000RR is down below in the description. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. For returning subscribers, tap that bell and you'll get notified when new content is uploaded. Okay, I've frozen my arse off long enough. I'm gonna go inside that door right there and see what Zach the Master Mechanic is up to. So what we're going to do today is we have the handheld uh -huh. and we have uh, some block off plates. We have a sprint air filter, yeah. the street one, not the racetrack one. It's not as see-through, but honestly, if you're on the street, this does a little better job of filtering. Okay. The race one seems to let some dirt through if you're on normal roads. Racetracks aren't quite as dirty. Uh, intake air temp sensor relocation kit comes with a block off and a nice wire so we can move our intake air temp sensor up to the nose and we'll tell you why we're going to do that. And then a uh, block off kit for the uh, flapper valves which is inside the intake track and if you look down the nose here you can see we can't see our air filter. There's just some black doors in there. Yes. And uh, at 8,000 RPM those little doors open up. Well, if we just leave those doors open all the time, there's no restrictions. There's also some stuff we can cut out of the air box when we remove them and make it even bigger. And uh, yeah, it just helps. Anytime you can get more air in, you'll wind up with more horsepower. Nice. Out. So first thing we're going to do is if uh, we'll just do it like as if you ordered this stuff, um, you'd open up your handheld and you want to get this going first while you do everything else. I already uh, updated the handheld so we don't have to wait for that part, but you plug this in. Ren Tuning will send you a link for uh, their software, which is My Genius Client. And you'll open up, you'll download the My Genius Client, get it going on your computer. If you have a slow computer like ours, it'll take a while. Yeah, it's cold outside, so it has to go a little slow. <laughs> right. uh, plug it in the USB. Do it wrong a couple times because it's a USB. Never know which direction they go. And then when you plug it in, it should say on here, it'll flip to USB mode, USB communication, initializing. And then you'll go to update and you would click update. Okay. And when you click update, it updates this and it registers this with uh, either DIM Sport or Bren Tuning or someone. So okay. then you get your next cable. So much for the Ziploc bag, I tried. Yeah. Plug it into its serial port here. Old school serial port. Yeah. Screw it in there, and then we're gonna go to our, what is known as an OBD diagnostic connector. It's what's been on cars since 1996. Motorcycles just recently switched to them. Okay. It's just so that there's a standard so everyone knows what every pin of this is. Oh, nice. Um, and then we'll plug it in. And it's pretty easy. You just follow the prompts that come up on the screen. It's not touch screen or anything, so you don't have to calibrate it, so that's nice. So we're gonna go with uh, work. And then you're gonna select your motorcycle. S1000's at the end. They made this nice now. They put the years before you had to kind of guess a horsepower. <laughs> okay. And that said, connect to a battery charger. We're all right, we don't need to. This has been on a charger. Push OK, it tells you to turn the dash on. You don't have to wait for the bike to boot up. You just need to turn the key on real fast. It registers real quick every time you do off and on. So now it picked its protocol. That's how it's gonna program and talk to the motorcycle. It's going to double check its protocol. Okay. And 
And now we'll do work again. And we should have a tool. We have reading code if. So that's what we want to do. We want to read that. Okay. So it's going to tell us to uh, make sure we ID'd it first, which we did. That's what we just got done doing so it knows what protocol to use. And now it should have the uh, stock file that's needed to get to Bren tuning so that they can send you back a modified file. Okay. So you just unplug this, there's no off or anything. And then what we're gonna do is come back to our computer, plug it back in. Um, you can see that these boxes that were grayed out before, you yeah. can now click on. And that's what we wanna do. We're going to download from My Genius because we just put the file from the bike onto it. So we need to get the file from this onto your computer. So you're gonna download from the My Genius tool. Okay. All right, so it says it downloaded it, so that's good. Um, before it asked where it opens up where it saved it at. So that's good, so look where it's saved at. Mine just always goes to downloads. Okay. Because now you can just leave it here. You can drag it to your desktop if you don't wanna lose it. Yeah. You can just drag this right out to your desktop. Uh, I'm gonna leave it in the download because then what I'm gonna do is go to my email and you'll email sales at Bren Tuning. Okay, that and file. Then, yeah. yeah, you attach that file and they'll send you a little uh, questionnaire asking what you paid for, what, what's done to your bike. Uh, to give them as much information as you can, you'll get that much better of a tune back from them. Okay. Yeah, so we've used Bren Tuning for how long? Now? Probably 10 years? Yeah, easy. I mean, with the H HP4 was yeah. probably the first. and. I mean, yeah, there's been some trial and error stuff, but no major issues ever. Yeah. Uh, can always get a hold of them, and they've been super helpful as of recently. So, uh, yeah, that's why we stick with them. And then other reasons are it's just for the S1000, it's a very sophisticated motorcycle. Yes. And they have the knowledge and technology to be able to unlock it all. With the Bren tuning upgrade, the wideband oxygen sensors are kept in place because you now have a self-tuning motorcycle. Like, we're going to install some parts on your M bike. We don't even have to put it on a dyno or anything. The bike's going to adjust itself because of the Bren tuning, the way that he uses uh, the files. Yes. And then uh, his data tables are just so much more in-depth. His uh, ignition timing, his mapping, there's just his throttle control. All that is way more in-depth than you can get with any other Woolwich or anything like that. Yes, you can get good results out of a Woolwich or something, but it takes a lot of time on a dyno. You have to ha know exactly how to use their software. And even then you're not getting into those data tables for the suspension, for the, uh, he gets some data from World Superbike that just none of those other people have access to. Yes. Um, he even has contacts at BMW. So it's just, it is a better option. The biggest thing on this bike is the second gear. Uh, if stage one, pretty much when you get the bike, everyone that's bought one here, we just go put a stage one on it almost immediately yeah. because second gear is just useless. It really yes. is. And it's, I swear it's gotten worse on the, well, <laughs> newer, the newer bikes. bikes yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah. So that's why we use them. And so far, no issues with the 2022, a yeah. uh, couple that did an idle, but just send an email back. Hey, my bike doesn't idle. Oh, he'll raise the idle speed a little bit. Gets rid of that problem. You know, yeah. uh, I can't think of any other issues that came up that have been tuning related. Sometimes, now it's always tough. You always want to blame it as first thing. Yeah. And they know that too. So sometimes they'll send you back a quick reply like, no, it's not our problem without, because it probably really isn't their problem. Right. And they just hear that all day long, you know? Um, trying to think of anything else that we want to say. I think that's it for now. Yeah. So I'm going to get this file sent off and then uh, we'll get to work on the motorcycle. Uh, pretty much every modern sport bike has two sets of fuel injectors, one down low, which at lower RPM is all that it runs off of. Once you get up to 6,000, 8,000, I'm not really sure. The second set of what's called shower head injectors kick in, dump a ton more fuel, help pick up the revs even quicker. Uh, CBRs, the Kawasaki, I, th I think everyone has it. Yeah. Um, we have to get this part of the air box off in the front to get uh, to our flapper motors. You can definitely see a little bit more through it yep. than we could the stock one, which means we're gonna get more air through here. These don't use any oil, they're pretty cool. You just, uh, whenever it looks dirty, you can look right down the front once we get this done and uh, you just wash it off, blow it off gently. You can use compressed air, but don't go crazy with it. Okay. Then let it dry and put it back in your bike. This is our air intake temp sensor right here. We gotta unplug it, I'll show you how to get it out. Once you unplug it, it just turns, I don't know, 45 degrees or so, and then it pops out. 
And this we're gonna move into the front of the motorcycle in the intake track right here so that it gets the actual ambient air temperature yeah. all the time. With, when it's here, you got the gas tank, you got your fuel, you got, this is all getting hot. So what happens is this gets heat soaked yes. is what it's called. So instead of it saying it's 80 degrees outside, this might really read 120. Yeah. When it says 120, there's built in fail safes that the bike's gonna detune uh, ignition timing, maybe fuel a little bit, run a little extra rich to make sure that nothing bad happens to the engine. Yeah. Well, through testing, they found out that it is still safe. We can run, we can get that actual 85 degrees, and it's not gonna give you more power, but it's gonna keep your horsepower more constant on a hot day. Makes sense. And then once we get that loose, we just have to unplug this top set of injectors. These are nice, they pretty much line up directly with each injector, so you don't really need to label them. This bottom screw is a Torx 40 a lot bigger than the 30. And these seem to be pretty easy to cross thread when you put them back in, so be careful. And then we're gonna remove the four screws holding our upper set of injectors in. And that'll allow us to remove. Oh, I gotta get that air valve off over here. This guy here just pops off. Like so. And that allows us to remove that. Oh yeah, one more, one more hose that's easier to get from the bottom here than it is the top. This crankcase vent line it's easier to get the clamp on and off right there so that's what we're going to do it you just take a pick like so and catch the second little bump here just rotate up you can see our clamp release just so we can push on the hose here. And then we'll take the clamp off just so it doesn't get lost. Good idea. Because it's gonna kind of fish its way up through the throttle bodies. Lay this back out of the way. Like so. Okay. So this is our air box. This is our variable intake length um, at higher RPM. I believe this drops down to so make the intake runners longer. I may have that backwards. I haven't looked into it for a while, but there's a little stepper motor up here that moves this up and down. So that's pretty cool. And these two little pieces here always tricked me for a long time. These are actually separate. So you want to go ahead and pull them so they don't fall and put them on the side of the motorcycle because it's pretty easy to mix them up. I don't even know what they do. You could probably leave them off and it wouldn't hurt anything, but I'm sure uh, they're there for a reason. So we'll put them back on. Then there's just two little tabs you have to push. If you look right there, see that tab? And yes. If I just push on that and pull, that should let us remove this. And then we're connected to a wire for the motor for that intake flapper. Disconnect that, and now we have the piece that we wanna work with. Let's take a look at the top of our valve cover here. We got uh, our coil packs. So below the coil pack is the spark plug. This is what makes the spark happen, is a coil pack there. This is our secondary air system. This is where fresh air, from the air box gets drawn into the exhaust system and then it helps with emissions. Uh, we have some block off plates. There's block off plates available if you don't want to use it. Uh, it's mainly off road though, use only on that. Yep. These right here are sticking out. This is something that's not normal. This is what controls the intake camshaft, the shift cam. Okay. So these actually are little things in here that spin and tell the intake camshaft when to shift to the bigger lobe. Nice. So that's pretty cool stuff. Uh, camshaft position sensors right here 
And I think that's really all the neat stuff you can see. Yeah. These little guys here are what control the idle and also give you in uh, race, or, yeah, race pro mode. You can adjust engine braking. That's what opens up. It either opens or closes this little valve to give you engine braking or take away engine braking. So back to what we need to do. This yeah. is fun because we get to destroy stuff. Oh, nice. Just take these <laughs> and save weight. These three screws come out. This comes out and a mess of gears. We can put all this just in a bag or off to the side. This is just gonna come out, lose a flap. This one does the same thing, except it's a little more stuck for some reason. All right, no more flappers. Nice. So that's mod number one. Mod number two, we still have this square restriction in here. I don't know if it makes a huge difference or not. I've cut some people's out. I haven't cut anyone. No one said like, oh, my bike seems faster or not. We're going to go ahead and cut these out. Okay. It's just going to make it that much bigger. Okay. So bigger should always be better. It is kind of cool. You see this, this Ram Air setup comes right in past the steering stem. Yep. Uh, let me get a flashlight. See, you can see the light probably. Can you catch that on the camera or no? Yes. Yes, there it is. All right. So that's our intake track goes straight through. The only obstruction is the steering stem. Uh, Honda and Aprilia and a lot of other people go in from the frame and then you have to have cutouts and tubes into the frame yeah. and it's not as direct, but you do have the steering stem in the way. So the kind of a give and take. I don't know if anyone's messed around with shaving the steering stem oh, and making geez. it s smoother or not. I, yeah. There might actually be something to that to get airspeed up. A lot of this is all calculated to the minuscule amount yeah. in the air box to keep airflow in a certain way. So to cut these out, I found a sharp, uh, what do you call it, craft knife. Seems to work about the best. Just be careful so you don't cut your hand. All right, just about done with our intake runner here. Just sanding off a couple of the leftover pieces of plastic, but you can see we cut out those two small things and now yeah. we have a nice wide opening. Okay. And then I'll uh, we'll blow that out with an air gun just so we don't get anything in it. And we'll move on to relocating our intake air temp sensor. Okay, so now we come to block off kit number one. This is for our flapper motor because you can see we have holes here where those little rods used to be and the big hole from where the motor sat on top of. So Brent Tuning has these awesome plates that are CNC machined with their logo on it that look fit right in here. Super nice. Gorgeous. And we just put one screw from our stepper motor back in and tighten it up and looks factory. Cool. And then the other side, we go to the other side of this bag here. Come on. Just have some nice small ones and they just press in. Cool. And we have a nice smooth intake runner. That. We can tape off the connector for the stepper motor for the intake flat first because we're not going to use that anymore. All right, so we're ready to install our intake runner piece. I found where that other plug went. It just goes to this, which was just a drain and must just help uh, with airflow, they figure. So we went ahead and popped that in. And now this just slides back in and it's going to clip into those two spots that we had to release. There we go. Two pops. We'll take that. And then we just put our two screws back in there. And now our main air box. I went ahead and installed our plug for our intake air temp sensor because okay. we're going to take that wire from the harness and we're going to run it up front but it's easier to do once we put the air box back in position. We got our Sprint air filter, just slides right in here. Awesome. And then our air filter holder, it's gonna lock this into place with a nice, ooh, click, pinch your skin in there, I've never done that. Oh. That didn't feel great. Wow. And our intake track, back together, wide open. Yes. And uh, I also heard a ding on my phone and took a look, got the file back from, nice. uh, Bren, so as soon as we get the intake air temp sensor relocated, I'll show you how to get that file onto the handheld and onto the motorcycle. Right. I'm gonna go ahead and get our windscreen off because this is where we need to go to put our 
intake air temp sensor into the fresh air of the intake track. There's these three little clips you gotta carefully get off. One of them's easy, two of them are tricky. Definitely trickier to put back on than get off. Put them off to the side. This is just gonna lift forward. We already have a screen protector on here, so it's okay if we get some fingerprints on it, I can wipe it off. If you don't have a screen protector, be very careful. I've, I've yet to find anything that can clean these TFTs without scratching them or damaging the finish on them. They say soap and water, but even that doesn't seem to work very well. All right, disconnected. We'll put that in the top of the toolbox. Put it by that Honda ECU. Maybe they can make friends. Okay. Uh, now we're gonna get this wire out of the way and right here is where we're gonna wanna put a hole for that intake air temp sensor. And what's gonna hold it in place is this O-ring. So I like to just take a caliper. They're all the same, but I can never remember what size it is. I think it's like 13 or something. So if we measure inside this O-ring, we're 12.4. Oh, my batteries are dying. The O-ring's 12.6. So we wanna be about 12 and a half. That way it's, it's a little resistance to get the O-ring in, but not too much, because otherwise it rips that O-ring. And that's what'll hold us in position. 12.46, perfect. 1364s. 13 of the 64s. Take our little auto punch. And we're gonna be coming in through here with the drill bit. We need to stay far enough away from that centerpiece that it'll twist. I think that'll be a good spot to drill right there. We gotta stay back far enough from the instrument cluster though. So there are a couple things to be mindful of when drilling the hole. Okay, I like to go just a little bigger than this drill bit, I remember. So hopefully that puts us in the right spot. And now next we're gonna run our wire because it's easier to plug the intake air temp sensor in and push it in the hole all at the same time. Where did I put the wire? Here it is. And we wanna try to make this look as factory as possible as always. So we start back here. This is gonna plug into our factory wiring harness. This comes this way. I like to put it underneath here. The frame cover took up a little bit of space where I usually run this wire. Let's see if this winds up being long enough. You can't see any of this with the fairing on. We'll go behind the charcoal can here. Charcoal can just takes all your gas fumes, uh, holds them in here, and then when you're running the bike, it sends them back into the throttle bodies to burn so that they don't go up into the air. There's all kinds of spots we can zip tie the wire to. So, oh yeah, it looks like we'll be good. And then we just come up. Right inside this bracket here. So rough routing wasn't too bad, right? No. But we're gonna go back with zip ties. We got this hole right here. Put a zip tie in the hole. We'll zip tie along that wire and we'll zip tie to that wire and that'll look Pretty good, I think. Oh yeah. Like I said, it's easier to connect this first and then put just a little bit of silicone spray on that O-ring. Hopefully I made the hole the right size. If not, we'll make it a little bit larger. I think I have to grab this with a pair of pliers because it gets tight down in there. Yep, that's what I usually do. out of the way. You can touch the sensor, it doesn't hurt anything. Okay. Or so far it hasn't. Yeah. <laughs> Famous last words. Oh yeah. Perfect. So now we're down in there. It took just a little bit of pressure to push in. I like it. And it's out of the way of our dash mount. I'm just gonna take a blow gun and I'll uh, blow out the plastic flashing from the intake track here. All right, so if we grip it sideways, we'll come in from this side on this guy. It's just that when you think you get it and then you let go of the players and it falls, that's when you're in trouble. That one's on and the top one's easy. Cool. 
So I opened up my email, it had the file in it, you have to download it, I downloaded it, saved it to my downloads, opened up the My Genius client, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna go ahead and plug in our handheld again. Just USB communication activated, okay. Yeah. And then uh, our two boxes are still highlighted or not grayed out. Now we're gonna upload to My Genius because we're putting a file onto it. Mm -hmm. It's gonna say, is it connected? Yes. And then we have to browse my computer for where the file is. Mm -hmm. Which is, come on, in downloads, mm -hmm. you can see that this is the one I sent, it's actually kind of confusing, and this one ends in .mod, so that's the one that we want to upload, <laughs> otherwise I'd be trying to upload the stock file. Okay. Don't worry, I've done that. Yeah. And uh, then written back and been like, wow, what's this work? And they're like, you're putting the stock file on the desk. <laughs> okay. Don't worry, anything you've done, I've probably done three times over, because yeah. I'm usually trying to do four things at once. So now we take this over to our motorcycle, and this does take a little bit longer. I haven't had any problem with the lithium batteries, though, not having them on a charger. If you have the standard battery, you would want to hook it up to at least a tender, if not a charger, because it does have to sit with the bike on for a little bit. We just plug it in. Go to work. And then this time we're gonna go to writing. And that's that file. So we're gonna push okay. If we had other files, we could scroll through. Yep. Once this gets installed, when it, you do writing, it'll come up with a mod file or original file. You could put the original file back on if needed. There's definitely cases where that's needed. Uh, whenever you do any update of programming from BMW, we have to, there's a whole procedure you have to go through for that. Yep. Um, connect, key on. This just says make sure we ID it. We did ID it before. It's very interesting spelling of please. Yes. <laughs> Plessy. Please. Yeah. There we go. So it does this. This goes pretty quick. This still isn't the actual writing of the file. One more step and then we can leave it sit. Okay. Come back Now this is the actual programming. Okay. And like I said, this does take maybe 10 minutes or so. So we can leave it sit. All right. Check out, you can take a look in our uh, nose here. We can see the intake air temp sensor hanging down, the shiny piece up in there. Oh you yeah, see there that? she is, yeah. And if you look all the way through, you should be able to see our air filter. Yep. Any plastic in there still, we good? No, 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 no. looks great. Got the windscreen back on, cleaned off the fingerprints on the dash, the gas tank's on and hooked up, so we'll be ready to fire it up as soon as this gets done. Okay, we got the switch off message. So we're gonna go ahead and switch it off. Oh, we're going to have to go key back on. It's going to check its log file. And then after this, we're just going to clear out the fault codes because it sets a bunch of fault codes when it programs. That way, if you have any issues, the fault code that it does set would be valid, not just 50 fault codes from programming. And that's it. We can unplug, put the handheld back in the box. Let's fire it up and see what we got. That's about it. Thanks for tuning in. Felt good to get wrenching back on this bike and yeah. can't wait to see it progress. Thank you. Yeah. Catch you guys in the next one. Thanks, Zach. Well, you know, you heard Zach the Master Mechanic. We're both excited about this bike finally being back on his bench and getting worked on. Some lucky person is going to have the opportunity to pick this bike uh, by supporting the new bike build series and having their name randomly selected when we do that here in just a little bit. All right, folks, thanks for viewing the video and we'll catch you next time on the 650EB YouTube channel.